So um, it is on diversity, it turns out. I want to talk about a few of the ideas, and there's so many ideas about how uh, increased diversity might in impact agriculture and its sustainability. And this is really work, uh, this is supposed to be given by Delphine Renard, who was unable to come to the meeting. And I, uh, she was my former postdoc, and we worked on papers together, and I agreed to give her talk. So, uh, so it has some of me added into it. Okay, so I will admit that. But it's really, Delphine uh, did this, had this wonderful paper on, on the issue. And there's been a lot of work in ecology in the last 25 years, which has shown a very strong link between diversity in ecosystems and both their stability and productivity. This is uh, stability, here stability, and as I will talk about it later, refers to temporal stability, to the degree to which what happens one year happens the next year the next year. If, 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 let's say, productivity of an ecosystem is fairly constant year to year, that's high temporal stability. If it varies a lot from year to year, that's low temporal stability. And there's very strong evidence from ecological experiments that increasing diversity increases the increases the temporal stability of those ecosystems. Here is looking at the, the stability of primary productivity and how it depends on the number of plant species. But lots and lots of work on this uh, and by many different individuals has shown this to be the case. The other thing which happens in uh, ecosystems that are made more diverse is they are more productive. A greater plant diversity leads to greater plant productivity. In fact, the premium is oh, a 200 or so percent uh, increase uh, in productivity uh, with high plant diversity uh, after they've uh, operated for a while. So the, the, what's shown on, the, on your left-hand side uh, is our results in an experiment I've been running in Minnesota for a long time, where you can see the single best monoculture is much less productive than, the, than uh, any of the 16 species plots. The dotted line shows a single best species growing in monoculture. And the 16 species plots, on average, are 200-some oh, percent more productive than the average monoculture and about 70 percent more productive than the single best monoculture. Well, that work, uh, as it was coming out, um, raised interest and controversy, which led more than 100 other people around the world to do similar experiments. And this has just been an amazing impact in ecology to have this many experiments on, on, an, on a subject and to let us really nail this down and understand it effectively. Uh, and uh, this is a summary of uh, of a hundred some different experiments where it looks at the ratio of the productivity in the highest diversity treatment divided by the single best species growing in monoculture. And you can see everything above one is, if you will, overyielding, getting more from uh, diversity than you could get from the best monoculture. And the vast majority of these, with I guess the exception of two or three, these are ranked from the biggest effect to the smallest are above the line of one, if you will, they're overyielding. And the confident intervals tell you that an incredible number of them are highly significantly overyielding. Now, I didn't have time to put it into my 10 minutes, uh, but clearly we know about overyielding in agriculture from intercropping. Traditional intercropping was done on poor soils as a way to have plants which had different abilities to either fix nitrogen or obtain phosphorus or something to complement each other and have higher yields. That still works. But the more modern version of intercropping has really developed in China in the last 25 or so years, fertilizes crops, which gets rid of that nutritional aspect. But in fact, by growing them at uh, crops that have different seasonality and when they mainly are using soil resources and light, they're able to have the same 20 to 30% greater yield from mixtures of crops, two crops. And these are major, major global major crops. Uh, 25 to 20 years so, probably 25% is the best uh, n number. I've been working on this with a guy named Lee Long at China Agriculture University. Uh, we were writing a paper now, I'm not showing all the results, but basically the number is right around 25% greater yield from growing two crops, the right pair of crops together, uh, than by growing each of them separately in, in the same kind of land and so on. Not as big as the, these four times more, but it's a big effect. And we need to think about intercropping as, as a part of modern uh, industrial agriculture. Here we're looking at uh, this work that Delphine really led, uh, I think brilliant insight, asking what's the relationship between the diversity of crops grown in each nation and the yield that that nation achieves and the stability of that uh, production, the stability of the total food produced within each nation. And how has this uh, been going on from 1960 until now, looking at decade by decade, looking at the mean production, the mean yield for a nation of all crops combined, measured in their KCALs uh, and its stability. And uh, here's sort of the, the regression fits the overall trends. 
Here's the effect of the number of different crop groups. This would be a legumes are a group, uh, uh, C4 grasses are another group, et cetera. Uh, gr group diversity, and you can see when there's greater group diversity, yields are more stable. Temporal stability is greater. Temporal stability of yields goes down when there's more variation year to year in the amount of rainfall. We know that uh, years with low rainfall give low yields. So weather uh, instability is a major cause of loss of yield, uh, and irrigation overcomes a lot of that. But you might notice the effect of irrigation in overcoming the effect of climate variation is just about as large as the effect of crop diversity in overcoming year-to-year -year instability in production. Crop diversity turns out to be a very strong possible lever for increasing the year-to-year -year stability, reliability of uh, food production. Here you can look at crop species diversity versus groups. Not quite as strong an effect, but it's really pretty trivial difference. The same thing is happening. Um, you can look at the coefficients in these multi-regressions that were used to come up with these patterns. And uh, here looking at crop uh, uh, group diversity, the number of different qualitatively different kinds of crops grown in each country, uh, the single biggest effect is the number of crop groups uh, in terms of its impact on stability. There's a huge effect of crop group diversity on the stability of uh, national crop production. Um, there is a significant positive effect of irrigation on that. And there are the two things with negative effects are temperature instability, so climate variation, and precipitation instability, climate variation. But the interesting thing is it's something that we really don't think about, the number of crops that is grown in a nation. Increasing the number of crops grown in a nation, these data suggest can actually help ameliorate, uh, ameliorate uh, the effects of increased climate variation on the stability of production of food in nations. Here it is looking at crop species, the same thing. Here are, this is just so you can know we actually did some analyses. You can believe me when I tell you the results. Um, you can see the F values for crop group diversity, et cetera. It's a really, it's a big significant effect in these results. And why does this happen? Well. There is no effect of national crop diversity on yield. Growing more crops does not, in, on average, increase your yields. It also doesn't decrease your yields. There's no significant effect of the differences among nations and within a nation through time uh, of, of crop diversity on the yields that are achieved. What there is is a decrease in the year-to-year -year temporal standard deviation and the year-to-year -year variance in the amount of the total yield that is harvested in each nation. Nations that have more crops have less variation year to year in their total yield. This is exactly what you expect to happen if you just had a series of random numbers. Imagine crops being somewhat different in how they respond to year to year climate variation. Some do better when it's warmer, some do less well when it's warmer. Some do better when it's wetter, some can keep giving a pretty good yield when it's drier. That kind of, of random, uh, that kind of variation among crops is all it takes to have a more diversified portfolio of crop lead to a more predictable, sustainable, stable supply of food coming into that nation. Um, here are the effect sizes. If you want to, you ask, what does it take uh, uh, to avoid a 25% drop in uh, crop productivity? We looked at all the nations which had had a 25% uh, decline in yield uh, and asked uh, what was that associated with and how likely was a nation to have a 25% decline in the total amount of calories harvested that nation in a year. And if that nation had a, I can probably use the pointer here, had low crop diversity, a mean, uh, a low crop diversity giving a mean stability of five, uh, this, this kind of a 25% uh, a drop in uh, yield happened one out of every six years on average. If their, yield, if their diversity was double that here, it only happened one in every 30 years. So 25% decline, uh, which is a major shock to a local uh, uh, nation in their food supply, is five times less likely to happen if they have a, 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 a double mean stability, which is associated tightly with the increased um, diversity of their crops, as well as with things like irrigating, which we already know about. And you come down here to really high stabilities. This is at the outer end of what nations have uh, for the high diversity countries. And now you only get this kind of a drop one out of every 450 years. So there's a big possible effect 
And all I say is possible. I mean, I, it's, I, don't, I can't say, we don't know, that a deliberate change in crop diversity is going to lead to a change in the stability of food production in a nation. But all the trends that have happened in nations through time has, uh, when diversity went down, stability went down. When diversity went up, stability went up, as well as comparisons across nations. So I wanted to give that uh, possibility to you today. Thank you.